Kathy Forrest. Um, I've been with the bank before it was even a bank. Um, been here since October of 1999, moving along and increasing roles ever since then. When we were first formed, we literally had nothing except a group of people with a lot of great ideas um, and the financial backing to put it together. The first thing we had to do was find a place to operate out of, so we did lease the top of the old Corvens building on 2nd Street. So there was a branch in formation in the upper level and a beauty shop down below. So We used to meet out at Jack Caesars, Eastern Mile Propane. He had a conference room in the top floor out there, so that's where we would meet and gather um, to make our plans. There were four of us in the organizing group, so basically it involved a trip out to Office Max. Four people, four carts, filled to the brim. So I'd like to say we had a really organized plan and a detailed list for what we needed, but um, we were in wing-up mode at that point. <laughs> they were very interested in a community-focused bank. Um, they definitely didn't want to risk the chance that decisions wouldn't be made here. They wanted, when you called in on the phone, that someone you knew was going to answer it, um, not randomly direct you to a 1-800 number. Um, they felt very strongly about uh, the future of the Gateway area, um, that we would be able to support it, um, and felt strongly that they needed a community bank here to help them continue along that path. Uh, they were very confident they could get investors, um, which they did. They reached out to Tom Sankson to leave the bank, and the rest was history, so to speak. This location was an abandoned Clinton National Bank branch, no longer in operation, so we went out and purchased it. They had no problem in selling it and turning it over. So it was definitely um, bank operational ready, but it needed quite a few updates to operate as a main bank. We had to mostly restore the lower level so we could have some operations area in there where typically that wouldn't be something you would find at a branch. But we were lucky it had the drive up, the safe, you know, everything we needed in that regard. We opened in March of 2000, and by the end of the year, we, we were 30 million in assets. So we had about 24 million in deposits and 22 in loans. There's a lot of uh, legal formation and a lot of documentation. So we had to submit our application because we were a state bank to the Iowa Division of Banking. So that was the first phase of the operation. So we submitted that application in October, and I believe we were approved in February of 2000. After that was done, we also had to apply to the FDIC to be granted um, FDIC insurance. So um, you can't use the title bank until you have that FDIC insurance. Um, and so the way we decided on the date we opened was um, the day after we got that notification, we could be a bank. So Tom would go every day, get the mail, did it come, did it come, did it come? And he was so excited, he took the document, went out to Office Max, blew it up, framed it for all of us, and we all hung it in our office and opened the next day. I remember uh, just the solid commitment from everyone. I mean, we just knew exactly what it was we wanted to do. And everyone was following the same plan, the same roadmap. Um, we knew we wanted to have locally owned community bank. We wanted to have it opened as soon as possible. And everyone was just moving uh, full speed ahead the same time to get it done. We had a lot of visitors to that location and I'm sure they thought these people are never going to be able to do this. You know, we would we would tell people we plan to be open in March of 2000 and you could almost see the eye rolls like no way. This is not happening based on where we were today. But we like you watch. 
I think the bank started with 13 employees and pretty much we were all opening accounts. It was definitely other duties as assigned was your number one duty. When the first bank opened, after the lobby doors closed, then of course we had to put all those CDs on the system. There was obviously no time to do it during the day because we were servicing so many people. Um, we did have uh, our core service provider was here, the core conversion team, helping us do that. So they'd turn up the music and we'd put those on the system and we, we were just having a ball. One of my other favorite stories is we did add one employee um, when we were still at 2nd Street. Sharon Hesselman um, came in and helped us and she was basically what I would call our administrative person and kept us in line and she always said, I, I told people I think they needed a mom <laughs> and that's why she joined the team. <laughs> Teresa Schaefer was her name. We have a picture of Barb, of course, greeting her, sitting and talking to her. I would consider that the first customer outside of our insiders. You know, if you, obviously our first customer was Tom Kelly, who was our first chairman. Our second customer was Tom Sengson, who was our first president. But as far as an outside customer goes, The fact that we had such good reception um, our first year and we were able to do it relatively inexpensively, we decided that we would need another branch um, in what we call our midtown section there. We purchased a mobile unit. We thought we could do that reasonably to kind of test the market for advancement. So we did that in 2001. So it was very early on in the process. We wanted to expand into the Comanche community and that came along in 2004. Customer service has been the focus of our bank and continues to be. We just look for new and improved ways to do it, um, to meet the changes in society and the changes in banking. And I really do believe that we take it above and beyond what anyone else does. Um, I mean, there are so many people here who are available 24-7. Uh, Definitely the community focused, all about um, helping the community. And I think our directors really bring a lot of strong support to that as well. I'd say it's really all about communication and knowing your place as part of a team and working together as a team. Um, I've said over and over again that this bank isn't about any one person. You know, it's only the quality of the team that matters. You're only as good as your weakest link. So um, that was definitely a philosophy that I think both Tom and I shared. And I think Steve believes in that philosophy as well. it's just been a blur. I just can't say how much, how fast the bank grew, and how we celebrated the milestones. And going back and looking through the pictures brought back, you know, many, many memories there. We were a $300 million bank, and all the things we've accomplished and still growing strong. So I, I think sometimes you really forget you know, that we literally started with nothing and where we are today. I, I gave this quite a bit of thought, I thought. How would I, how would I describe that? And I'd say both of them, um, the Bank of 2000 and the Bank of 2023, both based on certainty. Ours was we didn't know what would happen, what the market would be. I think the bank of today is, you know, what's going on with the economy and what does the world bring today? I think it holds a very bright future. I see Citizen First Bank being here for many years to come.